I'm Christy Lynn from Learning the Harp, and today I'm going to give you two fail-proof ideas for improvising. Now, when I've spoken to my students about improvising, I often hear this idea that improvising is this mysterious thing that only really talented people can do, or you don't know how to get started, and it's just quite an overwhelming concept. And today I'm bringing it down to earth and giving you specific ideas, because improvising is not just pulling things out of nowhere. A lot of the time we're actually taking ideas that we already know, and we're just putting them together in a different order, and so that it still creates something unique in the moment. Both ideas I'm going to be showing you today are interesting modes that aren't just the normal sound, like the normal major scale that we often hear. And the reason for that is because if we have a little bit of an interesting sound with the notes that we're choosing, then we can do really simple things and it still sounds fancy. <laughs> so the first idea I'm going to show you today is with the Dorian mode. Don't worry, you don't have to understand what that means. Um, you're just gonna play what I play and you'll be playing in the Dorian mode without even knowing what that is. <laughs> so we're gonna play fifths in the left hand and we're going to choose some arpeggio notes in the right hand. So let me just show you what it's gonna sound like. we could carry on longer like that. So all I'm doing is I'm playing fifths in the left hand and then in the right hand I have some specific ideas that I'm basing what I am doing on and then it's actually quite straightforward to choose the notes in the moment. Okay so I'm just going to explain to you what I was doing there and then when you're back at your half you can give it a try. So in my left hand I was playing fifths so D and A, I play them together and I play them on beat one one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And I do that four times over, and then I play three and one on C and G four times over. So we're just going between, we do that th four times, and so we're going between a D chord and a C chord. And in the right hand, what we're doing is on beats two, three, and four, we are playing any of the arpeggio notes. So when the left hand is playing a D chord, the right hand can play either D, F, or A, and any D, Fs, or As, and you can play them at any speed you want. So that could be D, F, A, or A, D, F, or, or maybe I just want to do a long F. That's fine, and we do that on beats two, three, and four, or any one of them. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So it doesn't matter what the rhythm is, I can do them in any order. It's just on beats two, three, and four with Ds, Fs, and As in the right hand. And then the same thing when we play C chords in the left hand. So you're going to play C and G, like I mentioned, uh, on beat one. And the right hand is going to play C arpeggio notes. So that is uh, C, E, and G in any order. So Okay, so the left hand plays on beat one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it really can be anything with the right hand, any rhythm, as long as it's C's, E's, and G's. So the reason we're choosing arpeggio notes with the right hand, so either the D, F, and A, or the C, E, and G, is because that is always going to work with what we're doing in the left hand. You're not gonna have a problem of clashing and, yeah, having a bit of a surprise, like, oh, whoa, that doesn't sound good, that wasn't what I was expecting. We wanna be able to confidently play notes that we know are gonna sound good every time, and this is an easy way to do that. Here's the next idea. It's a pentatonic scale in the right hand. Let me show you what it's going to sound like. So 
what was I doing here? The left hand is again a repeating pattern and I'm this time I'm going between E and D chords. Okay, so let's have a look at what I was doing in the left hand. We have our 4 2 1 on E B E. So and then our 4 2 1 on D A D. And again we're in 4-4 four, four times, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down, 2, 3, 4, down. So I'm just doing two of each this time. And then in the right hand, I'm just playing all the white strings, which is really fun. I can play them in any order. I can go up or down. I can do any kind of rhythms. And the fingering doesn't matter either. So you can really do anything you'd like to do with the right hand as long as it's white strings. And that makes the pentatonic scale. You don't really need to understand what that means, but this is what it sounds like. And we're just playing white strings. It's a wonderful thing about playing this on the harp. one sounds good no matter what we do is because we've taken out the F's and C's we've only got the white strings which is the pentatonic scale and that is always going to sound good with the chords that we're playing in the left hand so this is another great way to sound good no matter what you play so next time you're at your harp I want you to give this a try come back to this video and see what you can do with the Dorian mode and the pentatonic mode and just copy those patterns I've done and it's going to sound great I, I want you to approach this with an experimenting attitude it's not a right or wrong you're just going to go for it and see what happens and if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how to play from chords or how to improvise let me know in the comments down below um, and if you have any questions you can pop them there as well but if you want to learn more from me I might create a course about this so let me know down in the comments and if you're watching this video once I've already created a course I'm gonna put a link up in the cards there and I'll see you there bye yay <laughs> the fact that you had clearly planned that made it even better <laughs>